Madam President. The Senator from West Virginia. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I come to the floor today to talk about the appropriations process for the fiscal year 2022, in particular the Homeland Security Bill, where I serve as the ranking member of that subcommittee. Unfortunately, as I stand here today, as all of us know, in December, there is still no clear path for the fiscal year 2022 bills. And you know, that's a real shame. It's a shame, and I'm going to talk about that. Every year, it's a challenge to come up with a bipartisan bill. It's difficult to fund the government, but every year we manage to do it. The main reason being that we have agreed on certain rules, rules that transcend unique political situations where both sides know that are, you're required in order to re reach an agreement. We realize we've got to give on each side. These rules are what Vice Chairman Shelby has been insisting we agree on now so we can proceed with meaningful negotiations. So I support Vice President or Vice Chairman Shelby, and I encourage my Democrat colleagues to come to the table akin to the Shelby Leahy agreements of the past. This isn't a partisan demand, but rather an appeal that we all recognize at the outset, which is so obviously necessary for us to achieve an outcome at the end of the day. As the ranking member of the Homeland Security Appropriations Subcommittee, I come today to address that bill. I've been pleased over the last past year to work with our new chairman, Chairman Murphy, with, uh, on our subcommittee. We've had several meetings, and thankfully there are vast areas of agreement between us on a majority of issues. I look forward to continuing to work with him to advance the agreement for the FY22 Homeland Security Bill. A full year continuing resolution would be a massive challenge for the Department of Homeland Security. We know we have a continuing resolution going until February. Like all agencies, and I'd argue probably more than most agencies, DHS exists in a dynamic, ever-involving threat environment. And its priorities and commiserate funding levels must be updated through the Appropriations Committee. Further, DHS is personnel heavy, and we need to ensure that funding keeps up with the salaries and the benefits of the public servants in this department who are striving every day to keep our nation safe. We also need to invest in our Coast Guard and in our Coast Guard readiness, which is a part of this bill, and ensure that its important procurement efforts remain on schedule. I think we have great agreement on all of that. So in the midst of the holiday season, we all know the critical work of the men and women of the TSA. And more recently, we as a nation are relying more and more on the constant diligence of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agent, CISA, otherwise uh, known as so someone trying to keep us safe in the cyberspace. These agencies and all those within the department stand ready to protect the homeland. But we in Congress seem ill-prepared when it comes time to supporting and furthering their efforts. So that being said, and I know Chairman Murphy and I agree with, we agree on this, I loathe the fact that a CR would enable and pretty much encourage the department to reprogram money at their own will aside from the intention of Congress. So let's secure a framework, because don't forget, we're talking here of, in the midst of a continuing crisis on our southern border. Democrats have cited the supposed reduction in border accountings as evidence that President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris's immigration policies are working. It is true that encounters have gone down, They've gone down from record highs in July to record highs in October. That's right. This October's numbers, which are the last numbers that we have, were the highest recorded numbers of any October in history. And that's astonishing. And you can see from the chart how uh, the, average, the blue is the average from 2013 to 2020 of encounters. And you can see from January on, how exponentially higher all of these encounters have been. We got real problems, particularly at the border, that need to be addressed. So while a long-term CR would, would be bad, as I've already discussed, a full-year FY22 bill that does not address these real problems at our border is not reasonable uh, either. But 
That's what the majority's homeland bill does. Literally, the first sentence of the summary says, and I quote, the fiscal year 2022 Homeland Security Bill provides discretionary funding of $71.7 billion, which is $65 million less than what the President asked in his budget and $136 million less than the 2021 enacted level that we're living under right now. That's right, the DHS bill introduced by the majority that we're now told is better for the department than a CR, CR actually reduces funding from last year's levels. For example, for Customs and Border Protection, they're on the front line. The bill provides $14.5 billion, $80 million below the President's budget request, and $501 million below fiscal year 2021 enacted. So the DHS agency directly responsible for border security with these numbers right here, the one that is overwhelmed by these numbers, would receive less funding than requested by President Biden, and yes, less funding that's being provided right now under this continuing resolution. The same is true for Immigration and Customs, known as ICE, the agency responsible for removing migrants who receive due process and are ordered removed. Again, I quote, quote, for ICE, the bill provides $7.5 billion, $58 million below the President's budget request, and $40 million below the enacted level that we're operating under now, 2021. Once again, another account vital to enforcing our immigration laws cut from what we are operating under the CR. So, what is in the majority's bill that is being sold as border security? This is what they've chosen to highlight. $175 million for medical services for migrants who arrive at the border. By the way, the Department of H uh, Health and Human Services has enormous amounts of money in their budget. $130 million for, the th for three new permanent processing facilities. And $25 million for increased transportation costs. Madam President, all of these investments mistake border security with border crisis management. These numbers are not going to go down if this is where we put our dollars. Some of these may be necessary expenses, a reality of opening under what is ostensibly open border policies. But they'll do nothing to stop illegal border crossings and maybe even facilitate the administration's catch and release profile programs. And what else would the majority bill do? It would rescind $1.9 billion in border wall system funding that we've had in the previous years. Is taking away money for a border wall system that our Border Patrol has been asking for for decades and decades, is that border security? You know, this isn't just Trump's border wall. We also built miles and miles of extremely useful and effective border wall under President Obama. And it was that wall, and it was a wall that you could barely distinguish sometimes with the naked eye from recent border wall. Is rescinding that money good for border security? I, I say no. Is rescinding that money better for border security than a continuing resolution, which I must point out would actually provide an additional 1.375 for more border wall system. I'll say it again, and you can see it on the chart. Illegal border crisis remain at a record high. We need to squash this delusion that things are getting better. The American public is well aware that they aren't. Therefore, we need to provide the proper resources to the agencies in charge to fix the problem, not perpetuate the crisis. So, let me reiterate what I said at the start. Nobody wants a full year CR. We need to come together as Democrats and Republicans in the spirit of true compromise to avoid that outcome. We can only do that if we understand each other's true interests. Allow me to cite another telling line from the majority's Homeland Security summer, summary that I've mentioned before. Listed in their key points and highlights for Homeland Security, the very first one that they list is, quote, addressing impacts of climate change and improving climate resilience. They don't mention 
Number one, border security. They don't mention, number one, cybersecurity. They don't mention, number one, disaster relief and recovery, which is in homeland security. They don't mention the Coast Guard. They don't even mention the scourge we see on all of our states of drug overdoses, and this uh, homeland security is charged with drug interdiction. To me, that says a lot. It says a lot, and it's not going to get us to the negotiation table. As I've said to the administration, as I say to my Democrat colleagues, as Chairman Murphy and I have talked about, I think we are both ready and willing to work towards a solution. Americans deserve our efforts to reach a bipartisan consensus, but that will only happen by following precedent and a willingness to compromise. Thank you, Madam President, and I yield the floor. Senator from New York.